On this episode of China Uncensored, China supports President Trump's sanctions on Iran. In fact, maybe they support the sanctions too much. Kim Jong-un goes back to China for a second helping of Xi Jinping. And finally, an official who could have become one of China's top leaders gets purged by Xi Jinping. They never saw that one coming. This is China Uncensored. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. On Tuesday, U.S. President Donald Trump announced he was reimposing sanctions on Iran. Perhaps no country was as supportive as the People's Republic of China, mainly because they're going to ignore the sanctions. My favorite Chinese state-run media, The Global Times, wrote, Chinese companies doing business in Iran will remain in the country. China is the second biggest consumer of oil in the world, just behind the United States. And this year, a third of all Iranian oil shipments have gone to China. And U.S. sanctions could actually benefit China. As CNN says, if the new sanctions cause European nations to cut back or even stop buying Iran's oil, it would leave more crude oil for China to buy, possibly at a discount. And it's not just Iranian oil. The Chinese Communist Party has been doing business with Iran for over 30 years, and U.S. sanctions are less likely to bother Chinese state-run companies that do business there. Let's just say they have some workarounds. But there was an even bigger news story from this week. How big, you ask? Kim Jong-un big. So big you can barely see that island in the background. China state-run media revealed on Tuesday that Kim Jong-un had visited Chinese President Xi Jinping the day prior. What would appear to be the second secretive trip across that border by Kim in the last two months. Kim apparently told Xi that he hoped relevant parties would take phased and synchronized measures to realize denuclearization. Phased, synchronized parties? Kim Jong-un, vaporwave aficionado. This comes ahead of the eagerly anticipated meeting between Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un. And remember how the Chinese Communist Party somehow managed to arrest or kill a dozen CIA operatives inside China six or seven years ago? Well, it turns out the party may have gotten their information from this guy. He's a naturalized U.S. citizen and a former CIA field agent. He has now been charged with conspiracy to commit espionage on behalf of China. If convicted, he could be spending the rest of his life inside a U.S. prison cell. But it could be worse. It could be a Chinese prison cell. And it's time for another chapter in the ongoing soap opera of political infighting in the Chinese Communist Party. Sun Zheng Tsai was once pegged to be one of the next top leaders of China. But he was arrested for bribery and has just been sentenced to life in prison. Then let's be honest, he does look like a bad guy. But you might think, by Communist Party standards, bribery is not that bad. Why was he jailed for life? Well, as with most of the arrests in Xi Jinping's so-called anti-corruption campaign, the real reason is that Sun Zheng Tsai was close allies of Xi Jinping's rival, former Chinese leader and professional Dr. Kamikaze impersonator Jiang Zemin. And, oh yeah, Sun allegedly tried to stage a coup. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time. And it's time for me to answer another fan question. Coraline asks, A while back, there were many stories about China's ghost cities. Can you give us an update to that situation? Has China stopped building them, or are people finally moving into them? Great question, Coraline. The most famous Chinese ghost city is Ordos. They started building it in about 2005, but no one moved in. But now, 13 years later, it appears a few hundred thousand people are there. You know, with space for another million or two. Incidentally, Ordos is home to one of China's biggest Bitcoin mining outfits, because, you know, land is cheap. So maybe in another 15 years, Ordos will be a proper city. But who knows? And yes, local Chinese governments are building more ghost cities all the time. At least, ghosts will always have cheap rent. Remember, if you support China Uncensored with a dollar or more per episode, you can join our official 50-cent army. 
and I'll answer your questions at the end of my next episode. Click this orange button to support the show.